Now I think I'm live. Good morning. It's time for us to begin our worship service this morning. If you would, let's stand as we sing together. <laughs> we will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify. So I'm just, I'm just giving you fair warning now in case you didn't know. It's good to see everyone here. Um, not very many announcements this morning. Uh, the share group reset is going to occur on the first Sunday in January, which would be a week from today. There are sign-up sheets on the table in the back. Uh, we do encourage everyone to be part of a share group. And let's see, I think that's all the announcements I have. I do have a few people to put on a prayer list this morning. Is uh, just remember to pray for Brad Dunn, uh, for uh, Holly Kaufman, for for uh, Jane is actually here this morning. She's 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 well. Yay! <laughs> uh, uh, for Steve Clampett, for Gary Taylor, and for Joan Green. So keep those uh, in your prayers. I do need to add one more. I need you to put my young my look my younger brother Carrie on your prayer list. And, uh, and we'll just go with that for now. Just remember him, because when you pray for him, God will know what's going on. So remember him, and we'll, we'll have more news after uh, after next week. So uh, that that's the only addition I have. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, as, as pe some people, Mr. Bow, uh, Victor Balabogan, uh is in ICU in Texarkana, and they said he's not doing well. So uh, keep that family in your prayers. Uh, any others? <coughs> going once, going twice. All right. So if there are no others, let's uh, have a word of prayer. We will continue our worship service. Father, we thank you for this day. And Father, we just thank you for this time that we can be together. We thank you, Father, for, for what you have done for us. We thank you for what you are doing for us. And, Father, we thank you what you will do for us. Father, we pray for that you would be with those that we mentioned this morning. Father, we pray for healing. We pray for comfort. And, Father, we just pray that you would be with families as they deal with illnesses and sicknesses. I pray, Father, that they would feel your presence in a very powerful way. Father, as we continue this service this morning, may we may we remember all the all the things we have because of your son. Mostly today, Father, we do remember the forgiveness, the grace, and the mercy that we receive because of the sacrifice he made for us. And we thank you, Father, this morning for the empty tomb. And as we go forward into a new year, 
I pray, Father, that he will always be on the top of our priority list of everything we do. We thank you, Father, for this time together. We thank you for this family. And I pray, Father, once again to be with us as we go throughout the remainder of this time. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah, praise Jehovah from the heaven. Oh 
some very interesting comments and things said uh, in that chapter that I would encourage you that if you weren't in class uh, to read that, go home and read that this week and contemplate on what that bread of life is and that blood um, that's there that can cleanse us and purify us as well. Um, so we gather this time together um, as family around this table to partake in the bread of life this morning. So let's bow together, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for allowing us to be a child of yours, Father, that we can take this moment of time to remember your body, the body of your Son and our Savior, and the sacrifice that was made for us, Father, that by taking of this bread that we can have eternal life with you um, and share in the glorious blessings and riches of being your child. Father, we thank you for all that you do, and we most importantly thank you for the sacrifice of your Son. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity that we can gather together, that we can partake of this fruit of the vine that represents the blood of Christ. Father, we thank you so much for, for his blood that was shed for our sake. And Father, the significance of that blood and how it does so many things for us um, as a child of yours. Father, we thank you for your wisdom in allowing that blood to purify us, for that blood to save us, Father, to cleanse us for that blood to give us um, a satisfaction that, that allows us not to thirst anymore. Father, we, um, we thank you for your love and your mercy and, uh, and your son, Jesus. In his name we pray.
now we'll take this opportunity to pray for uh, contribution offering. Uh, as always, um, you can, you're more than welcome to give online. Um, take a picture of the code there on the front of the program. I'm going to walk you through it from there, or there's a plate in the back. Always feel free to give at any time, whether it's now or later. We appreciate your, your giving. Let's pray together. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for blessing us in so many ways. Father, we thank you for the opportunities that we have to serve you and to serve in your kingdom. Father, we ask that you continue to bless us richly in the things that we do. Um, Father, give us success. Father, most importantly, help, help us to shine brightly as the light of Christ into this dark world and this dark community, Father, that by serving you and, and being exemplary of your son, Jesus, that others will want to know him and want to serve him as well. Father, we ask that you bless the Bypass Church of Christ and all of its work and all of its ministries. And Father, that you continue to bless these folks as they, they give of their hearts to, uh, to give to your kingdom and to your work here um, as we've served and worked together. Father, again, we thank you for all that you do for us and most importantly for your son Jesus and our Savior. In his name we pray. Amen. Would you be standing for this next song, please? There is beyond the azure blue a God pixel from human side. He tinted skies with every hue and framed the worlds with his great mind. There is a God.
Good morning. Happy New Year's Eve. Good to see you. Uh, we missed being with you last week. Uh, we were in Louisiana with Julie's family and, and uh, got to have some good visiting with, with family and church family. Uh, and it was it was good. But it's good to be with you uh, this day. Uh, we began 2023 on a Sunday. We're ending 2023 on a Sunday. Uh, and I think that's fitting. It's, uh, it's good. Been looking back over this past year and, and giving some thought to what God has been doing and some, some things going on within the, the congregation. I think it's a, it's a good time for us as, as a church family, but as individuals too, to reflect on what has happened over the course of the last year and, and look forward to the upcoming year. And so the title of today's message is an end and a beginning. And that's, that's really where we find ourselves in some ways. It's just, you know, it, it's just changing out the calendar tomorrow. Uh, life continues right along, but it is a good time. How many of y'all are New Year's resolution people? Any of y'all? I see one or two. Okay, yeah, well, we got some, a few of you. I, and that's great. If you are, it's great if you're not. Um, it, it, I think it, it is, though, again, a good time for us to, to take stock of, of what has gone on and, and, and to make some changes. And listen, we can do that any, any time of the, the year, right? It doesn't have to be the, the end of the year, the beginning of a new year, calendar-wise, for us to do that. But, but I do find it to be a good time. So... Um, I'm just going to share with you a, a few items that has caught my attention over the, the last year related to us here at Bypass Church of Christ. If you were sharing, there might be some things that, that you would leave out or some things that, that has struck you more. But uh, just just to, I was looking through my, my journals this, this past year. Um, this past week, which has been, it's been good to, to think about and reflect on uh, 2023. On January 1st of last year, we lost Joy Johnson, longtime member. Uh, if you knew Joy, you knew that smile, and, uh, and, and we miss her. Uh, I had forgotten that that was on the 1st last year when, when she passed. Uh, as we began 2023, many of us were in the process of beginning to repair and rebuild from the storm, the, the November 4th tornado. Some of us are still re repairing and rebuilding from the storm, right, Jerry? And, um, and so uh, that continues to be something that has made an impact on our lives uh, in, in various ways. Um, in January of last year, uh, we began uh, serving a meal and having open gym again on Wednesday nights uh, uh, in the, the FLC, and that lasted until August. And it was uh, it was an important ministry uh, that was was going on on those Wednesday nights. It was a difficult ministry. There were were nights that we had over ninety kids here, and many if not most of them unchurched and it was it was a a, a good ministry uh, bottom line is we we had to uh, at least put a pause on that because primarily because we really didn't have enough staff to safely uh, and effectively minister to that many kids on Wednesday nights it may be something that we Relook at again in the future um, with some modifications, probably. Uh, in February, we had our, our annual youth series. Every year, we we have that, and it, it's always a, a special time. And we gather on a Sunday night. Last year was really cool in that the Good News Singers were here, and they uh, sang for us. They're from Harding, and they sang for us uh, before the 
uh, the youth series kicked off, and it was it was just really good. And and Jerry, I would just for one, I would love to see them return again at some point. So, uh, uh, by the way, speaking of the youth, Jerry had a they had a good winter retreat last January. Uh, talk a little bit more about the youth in just a moment. I, I want to remind you of some of the sermon series, some of the preaching that we we did last year. We began the year. Uh, Finishing up really on the that series, the life of David that we had begun back in, in 22, and that we that we completed that in February. Uh, we began a series through the book of Daniel, and that lasted on into the the summer. Uh, and then there in the summer we did a, a short series, but I actually got a lot of, of feedback on this the short series called a biblical response. And I, I, if I remember right, it was only four or five weeks, but what we were doing is taking a, a hot button issue that's going on in our society today and then looking at a response from the Bible to that issue. And I, I really think that that's something that we may do a little bit more of this year, uh, particularly in regards to artificial intelligence. That's one thing that I think we, we may need to talk a, li a little bit about um, Anyway, we did that. We also had a short series on church, Why I Bother, uh, if you remember that. And then in the fall, we began our current series on Revelation. And I anticipate, Lord willing, of course, we none of us know exactly what's going to happen. But Lord willing, we will get back into Revelation uh, next week and probably continue in that series with some breaks for most of the first half of, of 2024. Uh, I think that's that's kind of where uh, we are heading. On June 25th of last year, you, with the Lord's help and blessing, raised $4,400 to help with the, the youth ministry funding. That was uh, over here, had uh, a meal and a, an auction, and I think that may be something that we look at doing again this year, maybe a little bit earlier in the year, uh, but that was that was uh, that was powerful. And, and let me just say this: I really appreciate your willingness as a church to recognize the importance of investing in our youth and making the youth a, a priority, the youth ministry a priority. Uh, our leadership recognizes that importance as well. Uh, it's not an exaggeration to say that as goes the activity and the health of the youth, goes the health and activity of the congregation as a whole. Tremendously important. Uh, and so, so keep that in mind. Also, uh, in the summer, uh, Jerry took kids to uh, church camp. Also, Jerry and Caitlin and, and a group of teens went down to Louisiana and did a mission trip in July, and that was a really good trip. They made a difference, but I know that that trip also made a difference in their lives. Uh, in August, the Falling Twins made their arrival. Right, it was in August or late July. June, was it really June? Wow. Wow. June, well, I ought to be able to remember June 7th. That's our anniversary. So, all right. The Falling Twins made their arrival on June 7th. Um, and also in August, or not also, in August, later in August, we lost Larry Brinkley. And um, I don't have to tell you uh, if you've been a part of this congregation or this community for any length of time, you know what a tremendous loss that is, not only to his family, but to our community and to this congregation. Uh, I think in, in many ways, it still feels like we've been punched in the gut. Uh, tremendous leader, tremendous servant, uh, served as an elder, and uh, we're going to miss him for years to come. Uh, in October, October 1st, as a matter of fact, Jerry led a, a youth series, kind of a special youth series on suicide prevention. And it was really good. We had some guest speakers here. 
And I continue to hear people talk about that event and, and just things that, in fact, Nolan and I had a conversation sometime during Christmas break here in which he referenced uh, that, that event. Uh, it, was, it was really good. I appreciate Jerry's willingness to tackle difficult uh, subjects like that. There are things that we need to be talking about in church. Uh, too often, churches kind of tiptoe around those difficult uh, subjects. Well, we ought to be leading the way in talking about and dealing with and ministering when it comes to those, those difficult things. And so I appreciate that. Uh, Again, that was, that was in October. On December 17th, we had the what I hope is the first annual Christmas program and, and dinner. And it was really good. First off, thank you for, for coming out and, and participating in that. Uh, thank you to you adults who led in that. There was a lot of hard work that went into it. Thank you to you students who helped in, in that, uh, putting on that presentation. It was just really good. And, and those kinds of things, I, I think sometimes we don't realize just how important those kinds of events are as a, as a church. Uh, it, partly eating together. And, and I, on one hand, I, I almost want to chuckle at that. But on the other hand, I'm very serious. Eating together is an important way that we grow in our relationships with each other. It, it, just, it just is. By the way, on that note, I was reminded twice before I got up here to preach to remind you that this Wednesday we have potluck. Uh, we do that the first Wednesday night of each month. And so, uh, but, but having that, that, that meal together on the 17th and then being able to watch the kids uh, perform and, and tell the greatest story uh, was so, so wonderful. And so uh, very positive. And then as we, we end the year here, we are kind of in the middle of our share group reset next, uh, next Sunday, January 7th. Those new share groups will, will start. And I, I just want to say, uh, and I've mentioned this before, but what that means as far as a reset it means a couple of different things. One, there's some new options available for share groups. Uh, the other thing is it's just it gives us a time to, um, to, to shake things up and do something different. This is a great time if, if you're not in a share group to get in a share group. And, and I, I, I can't stress enough uh, how important I believe that ministry, this, this ministry is to Bypass Church of Christ. It is maybe the best way that we do discipleship, that, that we grow in being disciples of Jesus and, and, and coming together, uh, talking and sharing in the scriptures. It's really important for going deeper in our relationships with each other. But it also provides us a vehicle, an avenue through which to evangelize. Because a lot of times people will, will be more favorable to an invitation to a small group gathering than they will to a large group gathering. And so those are all reasons why that that we do share groups and, and why it's important for us. It may be a time for you just to continue steadfastly right where you are in your share group, and that's great too. Uh, but anyway, we, we, uh, we are starting that next week. One thing that uh, the elders have, have asked us to do is to plan to meet together uh, one Sunday night a quarter, and so we're, we're planning to do that as well. Uh, where we, we gather, instead of in our share groups, gather together uh, in, as a larger group. And uh, so, all that to say, uh, again, you could probably think of some things that I didn't mention there, uh, but 2023 has had, well, it's had its ups, and it's had its downs, 
And so what should we expect in 2024? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know what's going to happen this year. You don't either. Not, not really. I do anticipate it having its ups and downs also. I do know that uh, a lot of people are saying, and you may have heard this, certainly if you listen to the same people that I listen to, that 2024 is supposed to be a pretty tumultuous year, and it probably will be at least politically, right? We're already beginning to see some of that. Uh, but anytime anymore when we have an election in this country, it tends to be tumultuous. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be tumultuous for us in our personal lives or as a church family, but it certainly could be. So how do we need to approach 2024? And I want to suggest to you this morning that we need to be ready. Uh, be ready. I like to kind of have a theme as, as I approach each year, and sometimes that's a little more, it's emphasized more like when we talked about one a few years ago, really emphasized that, and that continues to be, at least to some degree, a point of emphasis for us as a congregation. Uh, this year, I, I, I think it's... <coughs> I think it's going to be important for us to think about being ready. Uh, I think our study in Revelation uh, kind of goes right along with that theme. Uh, but there's, there's some things that I think we need to, to be ready for. And I think that there are, there are things that kind of work against our preparedness spiritually at times. So I want to talk a little bit about that. Now, I stole this from Caitlin's Facebook uh, this, this week. <clears throat> Whatever the terms and conditions are, 2024 is coming, okay? It's going to be here, and I can guarantee you there will be some things that we are not going to like about 2024. And there are going to be some things that are great joys and delight in our lives personally and in our families and as a congregation. Um, so may we approach it as preppers. Let's look at the scripture today. Come across this actually this week in uh, my devotional reading. And I thought, you know, that's, that's going to go along quite well with uh, what the Lord had been putting on my heart to, to talk a little bit about. Luke 12, 35 through 48. Be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning. Now, there's a sermon right there, actually. Be ready. Like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or toward daybreak. Let me just stop just for a moment, just comment on this. It'll be good for the servants who are awaiting their master. But then he reverses things. The servants are usually the ones that wait on the master, right? That, that are ready and that, that, that will wait on him. But he says that he will come in, the master will, for those who are watching, and he will serve them. That's interesting. It will be good for those servants, verse 38. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Peter asked, Lord, are you telling this parable to us or to everyone? Love, love that question. Does this, this apply just to us or does this apply to everybody? And of course, Jesus doesn't specifically answer that question. We 
saw him do the same thing in, in John chapter 6 this morning. He doesn't always specifically address people's questions. And by the way, he doesn't always specifically answer our questions either. Sometimes we have to be content and satisfied with no answer right now. Anyway, so is this for us or, or for everyone? And, and oh, let, let's just read what he says. The Lord answered, Who then is the faithful and wise manager whom the master puts in charge of his servants to give them their food allowance at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whom the master finds doing so when he returns. Truly, I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose the servant says to himself, my master is taking a long time in coming. And he then begins to beat the other servants, both men and women, and to eat and drink and get drunk. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him. And at an hour he is not aware of, he will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the unbelievers. The servant who knows the master's will and does not get ready or does not do what the master wants will be beaten with many blows, but the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. For everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And for the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. This would have been a much more pleasant message if we'd have stopped at verse 44, right? <laughs> I think that uh, it's important for us to recognize that this is not just it, referring to Peter's question. It wasn't just for them. It's for us, too. And the message is in a nutshell, is it is good. It will be good for the servant who's ready when the king shows up, when the master shows up. But that applied to them, but it also applies to us. I really feel like verse 40, I'm going to jump back there, is the key verse in this. You be ready. Because the Son of Man will come in an hour when you do not expect Him. So I want to tell you three ways that I think we need to be ready. First, we need to be in Christ. We need to be in Christ. If Jesus is not your Lord and Savior, you are not ready. Jesus, as we talked about in our uh, Bible class back here, he's not looking for intellectual assent. In other words, he's not looking for people who just say, yeah, I believe in Jesus. He's looking for people who believe. And, and that belief, <clears throat> you know, we, we say things, but our actions show what we really believe, right? So, We've got to be in Christ. He's got to be Lord and Savior. We've got to repent, turn from our sin. We've, we confess Him as Lord. We be baptized into Him. It's the only safe and healthy place to be is in Jesus. And, and so... It's not a stretch. In fact, it is just absolutely the, the fact is no matter what happens in 2024, if you are in Jesus, you're safe. So being ready means being in Christ. It also means be watching. Be watching. In fact, that's what Jesus tells his hearers here a couple of different times in verse 37 and in verse 40. Blessed are those, in essence, blessed are those who are watching when the master comes. And so let me just ask this. Are we eagerly expecting Jesus? Are we looking for him? Are, are, 
if truth be known, do we want him to hold off a little bit because I've got this that I want to get done and I've got that that I'm looking forward to and, and this too. I'm looking for Jesus as long as he don't mess with my agenda. He didn't say anything about that in this passage, did he? <clears throat> Jesus is coming back, and I don't know if it's going to be in 2024, it, but there's a few hours left in 2023, right? He, he may be back today. Which means, let's refer back to, to the first thing. Be ready. Be ready because he's coming. Be in Christ. But in an uncertain and tumultuous time, and we do live in uncertain and tumultuous times, we can say that about every time and season to some degree. But listen, those of us who've been around a little bit, it just seems like things are more topsy-turvy than they used to be in a lot of ways. But don't lose sight of the fact that our king is coming back. There are a lot of, you know, I say this on a somewhat regular basis, but our problem is not a problem of too little, it's a problem of too much. And and our much, uh, it, did you say something about much there? It, it, we'll get to that in just a moment, but our, our problem with, with too much is it, it becomes really difficult to be watching for what to focus on what we need to be focused on because we've got so much in our lives. Our lives are so busy and noisy. And, you know, when, when, when we're at the house and it's just me and Julie at home. Julie and I, I'm sorry. Julie and I are just us at home. It's so quiet. If I'm, if I'm reading, not a problem. If I'm watching TV, I can hear what they're saying. I, I, I can. But when the kids and the grandkids are there, it is chaos around our house, at least a lot of the time. Some of y'all can relate to that. It's hard to focus. And our lives are packed, and, and don't get me wrong, Love having the kids and grandkids there. I like the chaos a little bit, right? But we need to understand in the midst of everything going on in our lives, there are times when we need it quiet so that we can focus on what's most important. And, and so there's was some friends last night that were talking about minimizing, getting rid of some of the clutter. And I don't just mean physical clutter, but social media clutter and entertainment clutter and the things that distract us and keep us, you know, that kind of cloud the vision of staying watchful for the one, the master who is returning. Because listen, the reality is sometimes the clutter becomes our master. And that's a dangerous place to be. May we be watching the, the, the servants, again, it will be good for their, those servants who are watching when the master shows up. Finally, how can we be ready? Was be faithful and, and wise. Faithfulness and wisdom are not things that happen. They take time. They, they take time to develop. You don't just wake up one day faithful and wise. It, it, it's a process. But, but I want you to, to look at these verses again where he kind of illustrates, I believe, what that, that means. Be dressed, ready for what? Service. Be ready to do something. Okay? Be dressed, ready to serve when the master comes. Uh, who then is the faithful and wise manager? Well, it's the one, verse 43, who, this, who the master finds doing, and I'm going to kind of paraphrase here, what he's supposed to be doing when he comes back. The one who's doing, who's faithful about his business. And not his business, his 
his business. From everyone, oh, there, there it is. From everyone who's been given much, much will be demanded. And the, from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. That's a scary verse to me. Because the fact is, we have been given much. I could, I could preach a lot longer about the much that we've been given. But if you're here listening to this right now, you're rich compared to most of the world today and most of human history. I don't care. I'm not talking about comparing us to each other. It's talking about comparing us to humans. We are so rich. So what does it mean to be faithful and wise? Well, again, to be about the Father's business. We're not... Our purpose in life is not to accumulate more. It's not to have a good retirement. It's not a, to have a, a, a positive stock portfolio. It's, it's, not, it's not fame. It's not fortune. It's not all those things that we tend to chase. Our purpose in life is to serve our master. Now, praise God if you've got a great stock portfolio, right? Praise God if you've got, got, right? If you've got. But just remember, that's not the, the purpose for which God has created us. He's created us to be about his business. And so in the midst of work and family and recreation and just life, we're supposed to be about his business even as we get to go about our business. Does that, does that make sense? Let me, let me give you an illustration of this. I've heard uh, our, our good friend and, and father of faith, Clayton Whaley, preaches at Moss Bluff uh, where we attended last, last Sunday. And he told this story towards the end of his sermon. But it really illustrates well what we're talking about here being about the father's business. His son and uh, son-in-law and daughter and their family were visiting and they got up on, in the morning and they wanted bacon and eggs for, for uh, breakfast. The problem was they didn't have any bacon in the house. And so Clayton and his son-in-law Craig, they did what many of us would do. They went to the grocery store to get some bacon. And so they walked back there to the meat department and they're getting ready to, to get some bacon. And here comes the guy, the butcher working in the back there. He comes out and he's going about his business. But they can just tell by looking at his, in his face that this guy is in deep distress. I mean, he is, his, his face says, I am hurting. All of, now remember, why did they go to the grocery store? To get some bacon, that's right. But suddenly, they've got somebody in front of them. And so Clayton asked him, Sir, is everything okay? Well, no longer was it about bacon, because everything was not okay with this guy. He was planning that day to go to work and then go home and commit suicide. And this, in the midst of this conversation, that came out and they had the opportunity to minister Jesus to him and pray with him. And obviously he didn't commit suicide. And I don't remember all the details of the story, but he began from that moment on a restoration. Because they were there at that divine appointment. Remember, they were just going to get bacon. But that wasn't why they were there that morning. You and I, in the midst of going about our daily lives, whether it's going to get the bacon, or it's going to work, or it's going home, or it's doing what we're doing, God, from time to time, places these divine appointments in front of us. I've got to confess to you, all too often, 
I stay about the bacon rather than about the divine appointment. Our purpose in life is to be faithful and wise servants. We're not here for us. We're here to serve him. There's that, that passage in, in later on in Luke, he, Jesus talks about what servant, when the master comes in, the, expects the master to just say, hey, great job. No, the, he expects the master to go ahead and be about serving him, serving the master. And the point of all that is, it ain't about us. Sorry, Cindy. It's about him. It's about him. It's about serving him. So how dare I not be willing to be interrupted in my agenda? It may save a life spiritually, physically, or it may be just an opportunity for us just to be able to speak a word from the Lord because the Lord does speak through us. He ministers through us. First Peter 4, he talks about this. All right. May we be ready. May we be in Christ. May we be watching. May we be faithful and wise. I don't know what 2024 has got coming up. I don't know. But may we be ready for whatever may happen. Let's pray. Lord God, we are blessed in so many ways, and we just want to say thank you so much for the blessings, material and physical, but also and especially spiritual. We thank you for salvation through Jesus. We thank you that he is the bread of life. And that truly, Jesus, you do satisfy every need that we have. We thank you as we come to the end of 2023. We're thankful for the blessings of this past year. We are thankful for your presence, even in the midst of really difficult times. Lord, as we go forward from here, we ask you to go ahead of us. We ask you to be present in us and through us and with us. We ask you to lead us to whatever divine appointments that you have for us and give us the eyes to be able to see. Forgive us when, when we fail you at that. Help us to be ready and to speed your coming, Lord Jesus. We pray this to your glory in your name. Amen. Amen. If you have any needs, make them known as we stand together and sing. Just as I am without one
we're so grateful that we had time to be here this morning at this time to be able to worship together as a family. Uh, we know, Father, that it's uh, important for us to, to worship you, not only because that's something that we should be doing, but by what you have told us in your, in your word, the Father, it helps to build us and to bring us closer together as a family. And Father, it's just amazing to think about what that will be for eternity when we're with you in heaven. Father, we're so thankful for the time that we've had this year uh, to share with our brothers and sisters uh, many good things, many things that we've had struggles with, but we're thankful that we've been able to endure these as a family, knowing that family is what helps us get through troubled situations here. We look forward to the upcoming time together. We look forward to spending eternity together with you. And it's through your son that we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.